Howdy. The purpose of this video is to talk about an interatomic energy or interatomic force curve uh, to relate those two things together uh, and then to talk about how they are related back to the physical properties of uh, material. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about an interatomic energy curve. And so what we're looking at is the potential energy, oftentimes denoted by V, as a function of the interatomic distance. We're going to use R because um, sometimes uh, we assume that atoms or, or ions are radially symmetric. Uh, that might not always be the case, uh, but we're going to use R to denote the distance between the two particles regardless. Okay, so let's start off way out here at an infinite distance. If I have two atoms that are very, very far apart from each other, um, in, essentially at some distance, they're not gonna really see each other anymore. Uh, and they're going to interact only very, very weakly. And so we can assume that that potential energy at that uh, very large distance is essentially zero. Now, what happens as these two atoms get closer and closer to each other? Now, we're talking about materials here. So these are condensed phases. You know, if I'm talking about a chunk of iron or uh, anything else that's solid for that matter, I know that the atoms have some cohesive energy between each other. Uh, they want to stick together to form this large solid material. The nature of that cohesive energy is gonna depend on the kind of atom that we're talking about. So let's start off with a kind of simple case. And let's say these are charged particles. We have a cation over here and an anion over here. Uh, they're going to experience an electrostatic interaction that is oftentimes referred to as the Coulombic interaction or the Coulombic potential. Uh, and so that uh, usually takes the, the form uh, one over four pi epsilon, uh, where I'm looking at the product of the two charges on the particles divided by the interatomic distance between the two. So I can already see that as the interatomic separation gets smaller and smaller, uh, this Coulombic potential is gonna get larger and larger. Now, because they have opposite charges in this case, this energy is going to go down to uh, ultimately to um, negative infinity as we get closer to zero. If we're looking at two particles of the same charge, uh, that potential energy would get larger and larger as we bring the two particles together. But remember, the convention is that um, systems want to adopt the lowest energy configuration. Um, so pos positively charged particles aren't going to want to stick together, whereas oppositely charged particles, positive and negative, are. Okay, so we see this Coulombic uh, energy gets... Uh, greater and greater magnitude as the uh, interatomic distance gets smaller, but that's not the full story, right? Because um, if that was all, then all uh, everything solid that you know would collapse down onto a single point. So there has to be some sort of repulsive energy term uh, that, is, that is preventing these atoms from overlapping too much. And so that would also start at zero, way out here at a very large interatomic distance. Um, and as they get closer and closer, that repulsive term is also gonna get larger and larger. And at some point, it's going to outweigh um, that attractive term. So where's this repulsive term coming from? Well, if we think about atoms with electronic orbitals um, getting closer and closer, those orbitals don't like to overlap too much. Um, so this is oftentimes explained in terms of Pauli's exclusion principle, but essentially uh, there's, there's an energy that is preventing too much uh, electronic orbital overlap. Okay, so we now have uh, the cohesive or attractive potential, and we have the repulsive potential. So the overall energy is simply going to be the sum of these two terms, cohesive plus repulsive. And this is going to look uh, something like this, where again, it's going to be zero out at a very large distance. First, it's going to decrease 
the cohesive term is going to outweigh the repulsive term, but at some very, very short distance, that repulsive term is going to get more and more important. Uh, and as we go to uh, interatomic distance of zero, that term is going to blow up. And, and that's going to prevent those two atoms from sitting on top of each other. So this is the, uh, the interatomic energy uh, versus distance curve. Let's look at force versus distance. And I'm going to draw this immediately below. Now you'll remember, hopefully you'll remember from physics class, that force is the derivative of the energy, we'll use V here, with respect to position, V of R, V R. So really the force curve is going to be the derivative of this uh, interatomic energy curve that we just drew. And so again, uh, the derivative um, way out here at an infinite distance is going to be zero. I see a minimum in the potential energy curve, uh, and the slope at that point is also going to be zero. So in between these two points, uh, I see that the slope uh, increases up to some distance about there, and then the slope is going to decrease after that. Um, so here we'll see the slope is positive. Um, I actually forgot my negative sign here. So the force is uh, the, uh, the negative, um, the opposite of the slope. So that means that oh, we have a positive slope. Our force curve is going to be negative. At the inflection point here, the force uh, is going to have a local minimum. And then it's going to approach 0 at an infinite distance. At this point, at the minimum in the potential energy curve, force equals zero, and at closer uh, distances, uh, smaller interatomic distances, that force uh, versus force as a function of energy is also going to get very, very large and positive. So we can, we can write positive or negative, but um, I, I would encourage you to take a moment and think about it intuitively. As the two atoms get very, very close together, they're going to see a positive force, and that's a repulsive force. It's going to push the two away versus if we start pulling them apart, it's going to see a negative force. So that's an attractive force. So it's, it's bringing, it's decreasing the interatomic, it's acting to decrease the interatomic distance between the two particles. So it's pulling them back together. Okay, now um, something very important that we can see immediately here, uh, let's switch to a different color, is this point here. So at this point, that is the minimum in the potential energy, uh, the net force acting on those two particles is zero. So what we can say is that at zero degrees Kelvin, so at a very low um, temperature state where there's no kinetic energy, um, the system is gonna wanna sit at equilibrium. At equilibrium is going to be uh, the lowest energy position. So this distance here, we're gonna call R naught. And that has a special significance because this is the equilibrium interatomic distance at zero Kelvin. So when there's no kinetic energy in the system, the two atoms are going to sit uh, at an at a interatomic distance that will minimize the overall energy of the system. Another way to think about that is at that position, there's no net forces acting on the atom. So there's nothing pushing it one way or the other. If I went to a slightly larger distance, there's an attractive force that's pulling it back in. If I went to a slightly shorter distance, there's a repulsive force that's pushing the two apart. Um, so this is very important. This is the equilibrium separation uh, at zero Kelvin. Okay. So what else uh, can we determine from these interatomic force and energy curves? Um, I talked about the uh, equilibrium distance. What is the significance of the depth of this potential energy well. This is really um, basically telling us what is the, uh, the bond energy in the system? What is the cohesive energy that is keeping the particles together? So as I start heating uh, material up, what am I doing? I'm adding kinetic energy to the system. I'm letting those atoms move around a little bit more. So if I add some uh, amount of kinetic energy, if I heat it up a little bit, um, 
basically that's going to allow the system to deviate from this lowest potential energy position. Uh, one way to think about this is to actually think about this as a, a gravity potential energy well. So this is a valley and we have a, a ball sitting at the bottom of it. If that ball has no kinetic energy, it's going to want to sit down at the at the minimum, at the lowest potential energy. But if I start uh, if I start giving this ball some kinetic energy, giving it a kick, uh, it can roll back and forth uh, between uh, different extremes. Um, so the higher I heat up the system, the more kinetic energy we can have, and the greater the range of interatomic distances these two atoms can take. And at some point, when I've given it enough kinetic energy, it's free to actually get out of this potential energy well. So I've given it enough energy, that atom it, it can experience random vibrations to the point where uh, it uh, happens to um, vibrate so much that it's now at a very large distance and it doesn't really see the other atom very much. Uh, and this is exactly what is happening when we melt a solid. So we give it enough um, kinetic energy to overcome that cohesive energy term that is bonding all the atoms together. So again, uh, the point here is that the depth of the well is indicative of bond strength. or bond energy. I prefer using the term bond energy. Um, and if I heat up a system enough, I give it enough kinetic energy, I'm able to overcome that cohesive energy, that bond energy. Uh, and that'll, that'll create a liquid. That'll let those solid, uh, that'll let those particles um, separate uh, from each other. Okay, um, what else? There's one other point I want to show, and that is, what is the significance of the force curve near the equilibrium uh, position. So remember, in a force versus distance diagram, uh, the equilibrium position is given by zero. Uh, now, if I look and I, I look in really closely, this is approximately linear. Uh, and so what happens is if I exert some sort of force on a material, um, the force that that, that material uh, sees as I pull it apart, say I start stretching it, the force that it sees is proportional to um, that stretching distance, right? So initially it's at zero. If I stretch it uh, some little bit, uh, I'm going to see some negative force. If I stretch it twice that amount, I'm going to see about twice that force. Um, and the same thing is going to be true for compressing it, right? So I start to see a sort of linear relationship. Uh, and this is actually what's going on when I am compressing or stretching a material. So the slope of this line, df dr at um, the equilibrium position is proportional to the elastic modulus of the material. So let's, let's think about that one more time. Uh, as I stretch a uh, material out, if I have a steeper slope, it's going to take more force to stretch it out uh, for some uh, particular uh, interatomic distance. Uh, and that means that it's going to have a larger elastic modulus. So this is another important relationship that we can determine from an interatomic force curve. That is, the derivative of force with respect to radius at that equilibrium radius is proportional to the elastic modulus of the material. Okay, so there are a few things uh, that hopefully we covered here. We talked about force, energy, uh, versus distance curves. And we remember not to mix the two up. So uh, energy, uh, the equilibrium position is always going to be at the minimum. In a force, the equilibrium position at 0k is going to be at the force equals 0 um, point. We talked about the significance of the depth uh, of this interatomic uh, potential, that is the bond energy. And so if we start heating it up, giving it enough kinetic energy to overcome uh, that cohesive energy, then essentially we melt the material. We talked about the equilibrium separation. So at zero Kelvin, um, at no kinetic energy, uh, the atoms want to sit there to minimize the potential energy of the system. And then finally, we talked about how the elastic modulus is related back to the slope of the force versus uh, distance curve at the equilibrium uh, position.